and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. Over 12 billion naira has been approved by the federal government towards enhancing the operational capacity of the various agencies under the Ministry of Interior for effective service delivery. The Minister of Interior, Abdul Rahman Dambazo, announced this while briefing journalists. After the meeting by the Federal Executive Council, he said 3.9 billion naira of the amount is for the provision of 22 firefighting trucks, water tankers, and other related items for the Federal Fire Service stations nationwide. Now, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo is scheduled to participate in an exclusive event for heads of states and a selection of business executives on moving forward Africa's private sector development under the Chatham House rules. This is part of the series of events the Vice President will be attending at the 2018 African Investment Forum in Johannesburg, South Africa, beginning from Thursday this week. Let's join our State House correspondent in Johannesburg for more. Hello, GD. Well, South Africa is a fine, beautiful country, if you asked me. And we are here in Houghton, uh, in Johannesburg, where the event is taking place. A, a, a great place, in, indeed. Uh, but you need to watch, your, watch where you put your feet, because as the chief police said here, uh, he warned uh, that we should be on the watch out for petty crimes. Uh, the rate is just so high here, and so is the crime rate in uh, all over Africa. And uh, this may be one of the reasons why investors are scared of coming to Africa. But uh, like the president of the African Development Bank, Akin Wimi Adeshino said, that you cannot run away from yourself. There is the need for Africans to invest in Africa. And by this, you'll give confidence to others to come in and uh, invest. This African Investment Conference, as described, would be Africa's biggest marketplace as policymakers, investors, donors, and everyone concerned are expected. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo would be here leading the Nigerian team. He will attend the opening ceremony on Thursday. He will also participate in the Plenary Investment Roundtable. Uh, there will also be a presidential investment chart where the vice president will participate as a distinguished panelist. It's very encouraging that uh, this is happening now. Hopefully out of this conference there will be tangible transactions, there will be tangible deals, there will be actionable programs where we see uh, a lot of uh, infrastructure build, where we see a lot of entrepreneurs getting funding uh, for whatever projects that they, they may have. And uh, it's a step forward, really, in uh, building Africa and making sure that we prosper. So much is expected to take place here at this conference. And uh, we, as uh, the eye and uh, voice of Nigerians, we are here to give you every detail of the event. In South Africa, I'm Jude Unifade, NT News. Many thanks, Jude. Now, the Senate is to investigate alleged declining rate of water resources in Nigeria from 32 to 7 percent. The Senate, through a motion by Senator Dino Milae, also directs its Committee on Water Resources to investigate the management of international donations to the sector, as the legislators urged Nigeria police to carry out a thorough investigation into the alleged assassination attempt on Deputy Senate President Ike Kweremadu. They also resolved to fast-track the passage of the police reform bill before it. Meanwhile, Senate is to investigate alleged misuse of the Special Intervention Fund by some politicians, as well as investigate the management of Shell P program right from its inception to 2015. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives is working on a legislation to eradicate discrimination against job seekers on the ground of age in line with constitutional provisions. It was in the light of this that Wednesday's plenary passed 
at second reading a bill for an act to eradicate age discrimination against job seekers in federal government agencies. The bill sponsored by Representative Sergius Ogun was referred to House Committee on Labor, Employment and Productivity. In the meantime, the House has resolved to set up an ad hoc committee to investigate the attack on the family of Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwaramadu. The need for government agencies to collaborate for economic development of the country and work to improve ease of doing business has been advocated. This came up as the House Committee on Banking and Currency engaged the management of the Asset Management Cooperation of Nigeria and the Nigeria Export Import Bank. National Assembly correspondent Omotola Omojola has more. Committee, as part of its statutory functions, visited the finance agencies for oversight, where their 2018 budget performance was presented. Stating the various challenges to the budget performance of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, the managing director complained about lack of patronage of the corporation's assets by some government agencies. We have a vessel that can accommodate almost 150,000 metric tons of products. But uh, to even convince any person to use our facility, that is why I support the very careful. I have assets that are empty. Then you will now go and patronize that part. So when my asset also belongs to government. At Nexim, the committee addressed bottlenecks to ease of doing business, especially as it concerns small and medium scale enterprises, among other issues. For instance, if we are doing uh, multi tracks, which is the uh, company where that would be in question, because it is big, we can deal with it directly. But we also have the uh, objective of bringing in SMEs into export. Do we as Nexim have the capacity to do that? We don't. We need an intermediary bank that will do the monitoring that perhaps will share risk with us. In this era that we are trying to facilitate, facilitate the ease of doing business, I think they should also try to reduce the burden on these SMEs in trying to assess these facilities. And one of the major bottlenecks is the issue of bank guarantee. Uh, it's, it's, it's an uphill task for most of these SMEs, and I think that's where CBN has to step in. The need for the trade finance institution to also invest in the service sector locally to reduce capital flight in health and education were also brought to the fore. Omotola Omojola, NTA News. There are calls for self-regulation, patriotism and sanctions to tackle the increasing spate of fake news with which threatens unity and development. This was part of submission of discussions on NTA's current affairs program, Tuesday Live. Talatu Ezerike reports. Information is power, and these many believe commands respect when it abides by ethical principles. It's only natural that the media refer to as the watchdog of the society to be in the front front in advancing national interests through right reportage that foster integration, cohesion and stability. However, the phenomenon of fake news and hate speech linked to social media calls for concerns. We must be resolute in tackling the cankerworm of free speech. If you don't find a source of the information you want to share with your neighbor or a friend or even an enemy, you are doing a disservice to your nation. The stand for ethical reportage can best be appreciated if one goes down memory lane. In 1959, Chief Obafemi Awolowo established Nigeria's first indigenous TV station in Ibadan called the Western Nigerian Television, WNTV. The first TV station in Africa, which grew over the years. Television, like all the media organs, is seen as a powerful instrument for nation building anchored on ethical values. I am not particularly pleased with the kind of regulation that should have been in place because we need strengthening of our regulatory mechanisms at all times. Gone are the days when news itself used to be defined as social good, 
That was yes. how it was considered. Mm. But now it has been replaced by something near evil. Mm. Some of the headlines are so devilish and all that mm. kind of... Yes. Anybody who then engages in hate speech now, particularly a politician, who should campaign based on issues and he begins to throw mud at another person, then does not love the country. If you want to lead the people and you will first set the country ablaze, who then will be left to lead? For others, there's the need for more concerted efforts to checkmate the social media on fake news and hate speech reportage. It's a number of factors that tend to agitate the political space, uh, which creates you know, problems for electionary in Nigeria. And the issue of uh, hate speech is a very important one in this regard. For us, an INEC is very troubling because it is a form of uh, violence for the electoral process. Mm -hmm. it, it needs some, I would say, some kind of minimalist regulation mm -hmm. of some sort. Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't really want the voice of the opposition to be lost. You don't want the voice of the centers to be lost. You don't want, you know, it's, it's very important for democracy to survive, for all voices to be heard. Yes. But everyone has to own up to their own responsibility. Well, globally, there are strong stands to ban social media based on consequences of fake news and hate speech that undermine national unity and growth. Analysts say the watchwords for Nigerian media should be that of law and order and upholding ethical values, especially as the 2019 general elections draw near. Talat Ezeriki, NTA News. Many thanks, Talatu. Still on politics, members of the All Progressive Co Progressives Congress in the United Kingdom are re-strategizing towards adding value to the processes in re-electing President Muhammad Buhari in 2019 election. Supporters of the party in the United Kingdom and indeed the diaspora have acknowledged the various development toll strides of the Buhari administration, assuring that with continuity in governance, Nigeria and Nigerians will sustain the desired growth in the country. Leader of the APC in the UK, Mr. Ade Omole, while on a visit to the party's national secretariat in Abuja, rolled out some of the plans by members to ensure President Buhari is re-elected in 2019. The that we actually put in place in 2015, but we've improved on that. It's called Ring Home, Get Your People to Vote APC. So every single member, every single progressive in the UK will be calling home to ask their relatives, their friends, their colleagues to actually vote APC. And every single member is actually a minimum of 10 to 20 people will be uh, called from the UK to convince them to vote for the APC due to the you know, numerous long list of um, achievements to date of the APC-led government. He said the group remains committed under the current national leadership of the party and wants members across board to remain united in the quest for total transformation of Nigeria. You're still watching Nationwide. INEC begins the display of voter register. Dotun is standing by in Lagos to bring us details. Hello, Dotun. It's over to you. Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Lagos. The Nigerian Navy and the United Kingdom Royal Navy are strengthening maritime cooperation. This indication emerged with the visit of the Prince of Wales to the Nigerian Navy dockyard in Lagos, Adeola Omokivie reports. The head of the Commonwealth, Prince Charles, was received at the Naval Dockyard by Commander David Goodman of the British Military Advisory Training Team and the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibokete Ibaz. The arrival of Prince Charles fulfilled military traditions. <laughs> He thereafter boarded the NNS Ekulu, which was commissioned a few months ago. NTA News gathered that while on board the ship, the prince observed the maritime command security performance. At the end of the visit, the Prince of Wales received the three hearted chairs before departing to other slated engagements. <laughs> The Chief of Naval Staff, 
Vice Admiral Ibo Teibas speaks on the significance of a royal visit to the Nigerian Navy and the country at large. His Royal Majesty visited uh, to see for himself the progress being made uh, through the cooperative um, uh, support that the Royal Navy and the uh, British government has been giving Nigeria. Um, we were able to demonstrate some of those capabilities to him. Uh, perhaps this will ask for the government to um, support the Navy, both uh, materially and um, in other areas of um, capacity building. And the aim of the visit of Prince Charles, the head of a Commonwealth, is to highlight and demonstrate to His Royal Highness the UK's maritime contribution to defense engagement in Nigeria and the importance of Lagos Harbour to the Nigerian economy. In Lagos, Adeola Omokivi, NCA News. The display of voters' register has commenced in Lagos, with prospective eligible voters being urged to go out and verify their names on the list in their respective areas. INEC National Commissioner in charge of Lagos, Ogun and Undo states, Dr. Adekunle Ogumola, made the appeal while reacting to the ongoing display of voters' register in Lagos. Rotimi Uluagbemi, who monitored the exercise, compiled this report. The exercise, according to Dr. Adekunle Ogumola, is to allow all registered voters cross-check their details and other information supplied to INEC during registration. He said the exercise is packed of programs lined up by INEC towards achieving credible elections come 2019. It, will, it should afford people the opportunity of ensuring that um, they make necessary corrections to the uh, data that they've submitted. And I want to also um, inform them that the possession of the permanent voters' card will, ensure, uh, will give them the opportunity of voting in the coming general elections. All the designated centers visited, however, showed poor turnout of people for the exercise. The turn up is not encouraging. So I urge Nigerians that they've sent messages to to come here, get their PVC, go to their different area and collect their PVC at their polling units. This kind of information with my level is not in the public domain. No, 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 no. I'm just hearing from you now. In some places where they pasted the list of the voters in some schools, so I saw like two places. The exercise, which commenced in all the 8,465 polling units in Lagos State, is expected to end on the 12th of this month. Time now to join Charles Abba in our Makodi Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Charles. Makodi, as the nation witnesses Day two of the strike embarked upon by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, the Benue State Chapter of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ, has appointed journalists to reconsider its stance and embrace dialogue with the federal government to end the strike in the interest of the nation. The acting chairman of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Benue State Chapter, Martin Skadjo, made the appeal when he led members of the state executive on a courtesy call on the vice chancellor of the Benue State University, Professor Nsu Moses Kembe. Blessing Omecha Ebute reports. The visit, which is one among many of the newly elected ESCOs to various organizations, is to familiarize themselves with institutions in the state for a better working relationship for the overall development of the state. Mr. Martin Skajo, who applauded the university management for the progress recorded so far, expressed worry over the strike action embarked upon by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, saying it would slow down the already delayed academic activities. Um, in as much as they have uh, some reason to go on strike, they can think fast and receive the decisions. Vice-Chancellor of the University, Professor Moses Unsu Kembe says, since the strike is from the union's national body, the school has no power over it, but promised to convey their message to the appropriate authorities. On the issue of the for two years, he says, the NYC has reconsidered their stand and mobilized all who are due for the one-year mandatory service. They have a meeting with the management of NYC and, um, and 
because of the intervention of other very prominent members of, from this state, uh, at the national level and uh, even at the local level. He further assured the union of the institution support whenever needed. In Makudi, blessing Omeche Ibuti, NCA News. And from the judiciary comes a report that a chief magistrate court two in Makudi presided over by Mr. Has ordered one Godwin or Male and nine others to be remanded at the Makudi prisons for belonging to unlawful society and alleged murder. Mr. Godwin or Male, who is alleged to be the leader of a court group, alongside nine others, have been charged for terrorizing residents of Utuko local government area for the past one year. The accused on the 26th of October 2018 were alleged to have killed one Mr. Idu Ocheche who resides behind the MDLEA office, Otupo, and also shot one Mr. Abba Obu, who is currently receiving treatment at the General Hospital, Otupo. The police prosecuting Inspector Veronica Shage told the court that investigation is ongoing to arrest other suspects. The trial magistrate, Mrs. Rose Yoshe, ordered the accused to be remanded at the Makudi prisons and adjourned the matter to the 8th of January 2019 for hearing. You are watching Nationwide on NTA. We'll be back shortly after these messages. Hey. Welcome back and thanks for being there. We now bring you the full report of our first story, which says over 12 billion naira has been approved by the federal government towards enhancing the operational capacity of the various agencies under the Ministry of Interior for effective service delivery. The Minister of Interior, Abdul Rahman Dambaza, announced this while briefing journalists. After the meeting by the Federal Executive Council, he said 3.9 billion naira of the amount is for the provision of 22 firefighting trucks water tankers, and other related items for the Federal Fire Service Station nationwide. Set House correspondent Adam Musambu has details. We are sorry for the lack of audio on that film report. Moving on now. A Kaduna High Court presided over by Justice Gideon Kurada has refused the bail application for the leader of Shite movement in Nigeria, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zak Zaki, and his wife. Benny Adams has that report. Like the previous appearances of the Shia leader, all roads leading to Kaduna High Court 1 were shut down and traffic diverted amidst tight security. Journalist not allowed within the court premises. At the end of the court session, the counsels briefed the press on the proceedings. The application was brought for, under the, for, on the health ground of the uh, defendant. The court said that the facility, he has not proved to the court sufficiently to the court that the facility he is enjoying cannot take care of his health demands. Even though he agreed that we have been able to exercise exceptional circumstances in the fact that uh, the defendants have been held in custody for a period exceeding two years, which is one of the circumstances that the law says is a basis for which a uh, bill can be granted. He still went ahead to say that as far as he is concerned, considering the nature of this matter and several other circumstances, he was of the view that it was safer to order an accelerated trial rather than to grant bill. So, of course, he has exercised his discretion uh, to refuse bill. The case has been adjourned to 22nd of January next year for hearing. In Kaduna, Benny Adams, NTA News. And now to the education sector. The federal government says it will not relent in ensuring education in Nigeria is tailored towards the acquisition of skills and abilities that can make the individual productive and self-reliant member of the society. This was in a message by President Muhammad Buhari in to the 2018 Annual Education Conference in Abuja. Online Kaoju reports. Initiated in 2015, the Education Conference is to provide an opportunity for communication of research evidence that will guide basic education policy and practice. With the theme, Education for Self-Reliance, a systems approach to education for the achievement of Education 2030 agenda, 
The 2018 conference is aimed at wiping out poverty by 2030. And in order to achieve the agenda, attention must focus on all education subsector. This government is doing with implementation of framework for skills development as well as product innovation. This administration supports the implementation of various initiatives aimed at improving the quality of basic education delivery, such as disbursement of 42.2 billion UBEC matching grant to 26 states and the FCT. The national framework will be targeted in a competency-based training and assessment system for all the educations available in the country. Other key players in their summation reiterated the need to imbibe accountability and transparency as yardstick to achieve self-reliant education. To invest in education is to invest in the future. And really greater attention needs to be paid to getting more competent and capable teachers into the classroom. The 2018 Education Conference is the fourth in its series. Online Kauju. Still on education. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has pledged its continued support, sharing education and culture with Nigeria to further boost their long-term relationships spanning decades. Saudi Arabian Ambassador to Nigeria, Ustaz Adnan Mahmoud, stated this at the end of a four-day refresher course for Arabic lecturers and judges of Sharia courts at the University of Abuja, organized by Umm al Qura University, Saudi Arabia, the mission seeks to have collaboration between the institutions, resulting in beneficial relationships in terms of exchange of staff, students, researchers, and promotion of knowledge and scholarship, among others. Ustaz Mahmoud said Nigeria is strategic, placed on the interest Saudi has on the African continent. The relationship between two countries is coming from all the events from the university, from the institute, from everywhere. Uh, the uh, teacher here in, uh, in, in Abuja, they are sharing their knowledge, they are uh, uh, know each other well. Uh. Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, University of Abuja, Professor Muhammad Abdullahi Kacha, who represented the Vice Chancellor, commended Saudi authorities for the training and appealed to the Kingdom to redeem its pledge of donating a cultural center to the university, which management has approved land for the project. It will not only improve their knowledge, it will get them abreast with what is happening in other clans. And importantly, it will let them know much more than they have learned before about Sharia, about Islamic teachings, about the relationship between Muslims and non-Muslims. Abdullahi Musa Sleja reports that the ambassador presented certificates to the participants. And now to the health sector. Sustaining significance in the face of technology and change is the focus of the 91st Annual Conference of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. This is a view of the vital role in producing and ensuring safe and effective use of medication as critical members of the health team. The conference was held in Ibadan, Oyo State. Uche Gochuku reports. Nigeria has an estimated 17,000 registered pharmacists responsible for the maintenance of the professional standard. This 91st annual conference is said to be the highest attended with about 5,000 pharmacists from across the country and the diaspora. With the theme, Innovative Disruption in Pharmacy in Emerging Economies, a roadmap for Nigeria. Different sessions dialogued on different ways of handling the tragedy of drug abuse, the challenge of maternal mortality, and good distribution practice. As you were in Nigeria, we're in there are lots of challenges with the healthcare delivery. We have uh, some of the worst mortalities under five and maternal mortality. We have drugs that are not available all over the place. So there's lots of ways we can do things differently. We are going to actually going to launch our e-registration in about two weeks. We have di uh, digitalized our registration and regulatory activities in terms of registration of premises and personnel. The state government has instituted 
The first state health insurance scheme to minimize out-of-pocket spending on health. The conference heralded a new executive with Sam Ohabonwa taking over from Ahmed Ibrahim Yakase as the new president. Appealing for the constitution of Pharmacist Council of Nigeria and Medical Council of Nigeria. If any medicine does not pass through that intermediation of a pharmacist, there's a chance that it will be misused or abused. And that is what is causing the trouble in our country. So we want to arrest that. Various categories of awards went to people who have distinguished themselves in the field, while Kaduna State received the baton as the next host of the conference. Uche Ugochuku, NTA News. Enugu State House of Assembly to conduct public hearing on violence against persons prohibition bill. Let's join Chinenye in Enugu for details of this and other stories trending in that zone. Good to see you, Chinenye. Good to see you too, Lydia. Good afternoon and welcome to Enugu. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and civil society organizations in Enugu are in a dialogue to ensure a hitch free election come 2019. The dialogue, INEC says, is to explore the role of civil societies in improving the conduct of the elections. Ifoman Dokole tells us more. The civil society organizations in partnership with INEC has over the years helped to strengthen the electoral process through the observations, reports, and advocacy for a better legal framework. Other areas is the mobilization of citizens to participate in the process of electing credible leaders. Chairman of Independent National Electoral Commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, who was represented, explained that the ideas conversed by the civil society organizations during the dialogue will enhance the efforts by INEC in organizing a free, fair, and credible election. For us to consult with them, for us to dialogue with them, and also for us, all of us to be on the same page as critical stakeholders in the electoral process. Enugu State President Electoral Commission and Dr. Emeka Ononamado emphasized the importance of peace in achieving free, fair, and credible election and called on civil society organizations to ensure that the electorates are always guided in the right direction. Other speakers commended INEC for collaborating with the civil society community. It's the enhanced synergy and partnership between the Independent National Electoral Commission and the civil society organizations in the build-up to the 2019 general elections. Participants at the workshop include representatives of civil society organizations from the 36 states of the country. In Enugu, Ifoma Ndu Okolie, NTA News. The Violence Against Persons Prohibition Bill has witnessed mixed reactions from members of the Enugu State House of Assembly. Susan Ezra reports that while some members supported the bill, others had contrary opinions on the benefits of the bill. The private member bill sponsored by House member Chuka Ene seeks to eliminate violence in private and public life prohibit all forms of violence against persons and provide maximum protection for victims as well as punishments for offenders. Members who supported the bill believe it will deter criminal-minded individuals from perpetrating their act as the bill spells out specific penalties for all crimes ranging from rape, sexual harassment. Being from page one to the last page, then you see that we have taken a bold step to make issues of gender-based violence justice in the state. Opponents of the bill, however, pointed out that it is a duplication of laws already contained in existing laws, such as the child rights law. As the speaker commended the sponsor of the bill and members for their robust contributions, he set up a joint committee that will conduct public hearing on the bill which has killed second reading. The committee has two weeks to report back to the House. That bill number 15, 2017, and now the very second time. Those who say, what's their eyes? Those who say, what's their eyes? The eyes are. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. 
The future looks bleak for students of post-basic school of psychiatric and mental health nurse in Enugu following their non-participation in the national qualification examination held nationwide recently. Eva Aneke has the report. After 18 months of postgraduate studies, the students are unsure of what the future held for them having been denied the opportunity to participate in the professional examination held in nursing schools nationwide. The student who took to the streets in a peaceful protest against the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Enugu, Post Basic School Authority expressed their disappointment over the development, the results of which they say is an extension of the to the next conduct of the examination. The aggrieved students are alleging the misappropriation of funds paid for the registration of the examination and appealed for urgent intervention by relevant authorities. We came here last year, man, to be licensed as psychiatric nurses after our experience 18 months here. And as part of it, we are supposed to go through a series of experiences, prisons, homes, communities, and all of them. I can tell you, as at present, we did none of them. But rather, what they kept telling us was we are going to write the exam. That was false reassurance. And we've been believing them. And what we did, we kept spending more money because we believed them. My hospital, UNTH, sent me and my colleague to come and obtain this license for psychiatric nursing. And as you can see now, we are supposed to resume work on Monday, 12th of this month. But what are we going to tell them? However... All efforts to get the management of the school for its reaction proved abortive as the chief medical director was not on seat as at the time of filing this report. In Enugu, Eva Aneke, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Enugu. We will now join Asmau in our Sokoto Network Center for more reports from that zone. Hello, Asmau. It's over to you. Hello, Chinenye. Good afternoon and welcome to Sokoto. About 500 unemployed graduates in Zamfara State have to undergo special training on computer, hardware, and software under the federal government Empower Tech program. First batch of the beneficiaries has already left Gusau for Chalawa, Kano State for effective takeoff of the training. Jamilo Ibrahim has more. NPower is one of the social investment programs introduced by President Muhammad Bahari led administration with a view to reducing the high rate of unemployment in the country by empowering the Nigerian youth. More than 14,000 graduates are currently benefiting from the program in Zamfara State. Additional 273 unemployed youth in the state have also been registered to attend an eight week training on computer, hardware, and software under NPower Tech at the Industrial Training Center Chalawa, Kano State. The state coordinator of the Empower, Malam Nuru Omar Shinkafi, who addressed the first batch of the beneficiaries shortly before their departure, enjoined them to make the best use of the opportunity. Malam Nuru Shinkafi said the ultimate goal of the Empower Tech program is for the youth to become self-reliant, thereby reducing the dependence on government for employment. This program, I think, if our people can be able to work hardly, it will reduce the level of the poverty that we are talking about. Executive Secretary of the State and Power Office, Malam Kabiru Zabarma, said the trainees will be given three square meals daily and a weekly stipend throughout the period of the training. There is also two modes of payment on this program. There is weekly payment, there is monthly payment from the office of the Vice President. During the training, the trainees will be exposed to hardware and the foundational software development tools as well as the resources to thrive as modern-day software development entrepreneurs. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. KB State Government restated commitment to improve fishing activities in the state as part of effort to diversify the economy through agriculture. Governor Abubakar Atiku Babudu gave the assurance at a town hall meeting with fishermen, fish farmers and fish sellers in Brinin Kebi. Usman Abdullah Hishehu reports. The present administration in Kebi State since inception focused on supporting different occupational groups to ensure people at the grassroots are not left behind in the government programs and policies. Like rice and wheat farmers in the state, special intervention programs have been introduced to support small and medium occupation and entrepreneurs to be able to stand on their feet. 
At a town hall meeting, groups of fishermen, fish farmers and sellers have gathered to discuss with the government on how best to support their activities for socio-economic development. The groups have identified lack of modern fishing materials, poor access to national and international market among the obstacles in the business, thereby appealing for government support. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, while responding to their comments, pledged to support the groups with about 300 million naira loan immediately. The governor, however, promised to link the groups with other financial institutions that will lend them money to improve their business. Governor Bagudu similarly said government will continue to provide more schools in their communities for their children's education. So participants express satisfaction with government commitment, pointing out that their livelihood will surely be uplifted. In Burning KB, Usman Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. And that's it from here. The news will continue after these messages. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the concluding part of Nationwide. To augment the efforts of other security agencies in combating crime in Brinin Gwari area of Kaduna State, the Nigerian Air Force has established a forward operational base codenamed Dirar Mikia in the community. Suleiman Abdullahi Rugachiku reports. The only thing I want to do is to thank. First of all, uh, His Excellency, the President of Nigeria, for doing what is almost a magic, because I have had some discussion with the Chief of Air Staff. The amount of equipment and support that is being given to them is wonderful. That explains the excitement of the paramount ruler of Birnungwari, Zubairi Jibril Mekwari II, for a community that has suffered incessant cases of armed banditry cattle rustling, robbery and kidnapping on the news of the establishment of Operation Dramikia, which means Eagle Strike. Chief of Air Staff said criminals are now in for the eagle eyes of the Operation Beast. With the number of helicopters and platforms that the federal government under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari has given the Air Force, we believe that we have uh, additional capacity that we can deploy here. Uh, so that we can support our colleagues, the Nigerian army and the police, as well as other security agencies, so that the community will be uh, secured. A bilingual Angaya school built to facilitate integration of al system of learning with formal education has been allocated to the Nigerian army and the Air Force for the forward base operations. With this effort and sustained collaboration with other security agencies, the people of Birnungwari, Axis of Kaduna State, remain hopeful to see the end of banditry and kidnapping in their area. In Kaduna, I am Suleiman Abdullah Irgachkun, NTN News. Thanks, Suleiman. A public-private initiative is once again drawing attention to the country's immense potential in commercial tourism. The Projectile Organization and the National Commission for Museums and Monuments took this campaign to Nigeria's first museum located in Elorin, Kwara State. Gufa Shadi tells us more. Established in 1945, the Isia Museum in Kwara State sits on 25 hectares of land and is the first museum in Nigeria. Giving it a facelift to promote culture and boost the tourism sector is what this gathering is about. We have so much in Nigeria that we don't even have to go to other countries. I mean, we have the museums, we have the um, natural um, places of interest. We have, I mean, look at the Owu waterfalls. That's why we all should not leave financial culture in the hands of the government alone. Each and everyone is being invited to look into the future and know that the future belongs to such service industries like tourism. NTA's Executive Director of Administration and Training, Steve Ebo, who represented the Director General of NTA, assured the groups of NTA support in ensuring that they provide a voice for the promotion of Nigeria's heritage and culture. At NTA, we have peculiar functions, part of which is to showcase the nation. NTA is going to play a very strategic role in this particular venture. 
project is expected to be self-sponsored through fundraising with an estimated budget of 118 million naira in Abuja. Gufan Shaji, NTA News. Sports is next. Bendel Insurance returns to NPFL as mascot for second Ministry of Interior Games in, is unveiled. Amanzi Marcos has more on sports update. Very hot and dry here in Abuja. That concludes Nationwide. We thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.